this video, I would like to talk about using Knitter to create reproducible research documents. Now, this might sound complicated, but in reality, it really isn't. This approach allows us to embed R code, the output from any R code, as well as any text write-up, all into a single document. The advantage of this is considerable. For starters, we can reproduce our own research after some period of time has passed and if our data has changed. So we have all that we need in one place to reproduce our earlier research. The second reason is that we can share this document with our collaborators and people that may be reviewing our work. A third reason is that if someone is challenging your result, you can make the document available to them. That way they can convince themselves that what you've done is correct. So our studio makes this easy. Okay, remember that Knitter allows us to blend in R code alongside text information. And we can create a Word document, an HTML document, or a PDF file. Let me show you how you would do that. Go to File, New File, R Markdown. Make sure you specify R Markdown. And then we're prompted for some basic information. The title will be Example. Uh, I use my name as the author. So here we have the opportunity to specify the output. I'm going to click Word uh, just for now. We'll look at the other formats momentarily. You can change this after the fact. That is, if you create a file and specify uh, one of these output types, you can always go back and change it. So it's pretty easy. So let's imagine that we're creating this file and we will do some analysis with R and we have a collaborator who is not a statistician or a data analyst of any type they just basically want to see the output and our write-up so this means that they can go into a word document which they're familiar with they don't know anything about R studio or R and they can edit the document and send it back to us this is one of the distinct advantages of using something like R markdown and Knitter so I will click OK here and what we get in this pane, in the file pane, is a template document. They're trying to make this easy on you. They give you an example. And you see the information that we just typed here. It also includes the date. And so the rest of the file looks, for the most part, looks pretty comprehensible. We have paragraphs here. Uh, the interesting parts are these grayed out areas um, known as chunks. And there's a little sub-menu item up here called Chunk. And we can manipulate these individually, and I'll talk about that uh, momentarily in greater detail. But for now, you've probably figured out that this is R code embedded in uh, between some delimiters. And the delimiters are three backticks, a brace, an R, and a right backtick. You can change this. I wouldn't suggest that you do. In other words except the defaults that they've given you here. So this code will actually get executed when we knit this document. So let me show you how that looks. Come up here. So if I say knit word, we get, well that was pretty fast first of all. Um, before we look at the document, if we look at the console output, you can see that it does some uh, processing. Ordinary text without R code, unnamed chunked. Processing, So you get information here that uh, gives you some confidence that R is actually creating a document. Now, we, we saw that very quickly it did. I actually had Microsoft Word open and running, which is part of the reason it was so fast. So look at this. We get uh, a document, and we get this output here. This is the output from Summary Cars. And it's a nice, it looks like it would, uh, as if we were running in native R. Let's look at the next page. You can also embed plots. So this is actually a pretty cool thing to do, right? We can share this information with a collaborator. He or she can go in here and edit this file and send it back to us. So if they're not, again, if they're not statisticians, maybe they just care about the output of this. All right, let's put this to the side for now. If we go back to the document, you'll notice that in the second case, there is this uh, argument that says echo equal false within the second chunk. 
So what does that mean? Well, uh, if you look at the output, you could probably figure this out. Notice that in the first case, we have the actual R code that generated this output, summary cars. In the second case, we just have the plot, the resulting plot itself. We don't have the plot command that issued this. And so if, if our intended audience or if our collaborator doesn't care or know about the commands um, used to generate the output, we can say echo equal false. That way nobody ever sees this except for us. Let's talk more specifically about the R Markdown language itself. The Markdown language is really easy to learn, in, in my opinion. If you've ever edited a wiki page, such as that found on a Wikipedia site or a departmental wiki, you're most of the way there. It doesn't take a lot to, to master this. If you go to the question mark in the submenu up here, there's two sources of information. One is a quick Markdown reference, which appears over in the Help tab. And what I, what I would suggest is when you're working with a Markdown document to have this open and it will answer 70 to 80 percent of your questions about how to, for example, create sections or lists or link outs or, you know, R code blocks. So if the template doesn't give you enough uh, information, look at this reference sheet. You may also try opening a blank or a markdown document and trying out some of these commands just to convince yourself that things are working. A more comprehensive markdown document can be found by going to the question mark and clicking the user R markdown. If uh, you have a web browser open, or even if you don't, it will open one up with this document, which has the basics that I just described as well as much more. If you look towards the bottom of the page, there are more sophisticated and in-depth references uh, for how to do things within Markdown. Um, so let me give you a couple of examples, a couple of things that I think are cool. If we go down to the bottom of this document, we can do things like create equations. So if you've ever used LaTeX before, you know that there is a mini language to create uh, equations containing mathematical symbols such as sigmas or integrals and, and things like that, which is where LaTeX really shines. But we can do this within our markdown also. So here's a couple of sentences. We can also create inline equations. And I just code up the formula for the arithmetic mean. Now, look at the markdown reference on the website that I just showed you to get more information on how to do this. So if I <clears throat> run this, if I knit this to, let's word, I create a Word document, and we look towards the bottom, what you'll see, let me make this bigger so you can see the results. You'll see that it actually coded up the uh, formula for the mean. So that's pretty cool. I can create this uh, inline equations at will. Another thing that I like is that we could make reference to a data frame. Let's say that we have a data frame. In this case, I want to load up the ggplot2 library, and there's a data frame called mpg. And I want to uh, summarize the mean mpg for city miles versus uh, highway. And one thing that I could do, uh, is this. I create a chunk and I don't echo these commands because the user, end user doesn't really need to see this. All they're interested in is the summary information. So I've loaded that here and I say with respect to the data frame MPG, the average city MPG is, and then I have a single backtick R space and then an actual R function where I take the mean of the city miles and I also do the same for the highway miles. Okay, so the advantage of this approach is that if this data frame changes in any way, I don't have to go in and plug in new numbers. This inline coding will regenerate new numbers. So let's knit this. And if we look at the Word document, resulting Word document, look at the bottom. So it's plugged in just as 
as we expect. Now I can actually go in there and round this. Notice it says 16.859. Since this is R, I could go back in here and force this to be rounded. This is the cool thing, right? This is just an R function. So I re-knit this and notice that it's now rounded to 16.86. So hopefully I've done a good job of proving to you that this inline coding uh, is actually a pretty cool thing. Now in the previous examples I've been generating output to Microsoft Word. That is, in this menu item, I've been clicking Knit Word. I told you at the beginning that you can change it any time, and, and I'm telling the truth. So if I take the same file that we've been working with and I want to output it to HTML, I click the down arrow, select Knit HTML, and off it goes and it generates a document that is suitable for display on uh, a web server someplace. This is the same document we've been working with. You could scroll through it. Now they provide a service. If you see this publish button here, if you click publish, uh, RPubs is a free service to RStudio users. And what this allows you to do is take a document such as the one we've generated and put it on their web server and you can publish a URL and you could share this with someone. So if you want to generate some quick and dirty results or even some advanced results and you wanted to get feedback from a collaborator, you could, you could publish it on RPubs, send them the URL and they could check it out. Okay. Now if this is sensitive data, of course you probably would not want to do this. You could just send them the R Markdown document and they could uh, generate it in their copy of our studio. I'm just pointing out that that possibility exists. Okay, so the last format is PDF. Now on my system, this is going to work fine. If you haven't installed tech, then it's not going to work. First of all, let me just show you that it does, in fact, work on my system. Here's the PDF file. This is readable by any, you know, PDF viewer, preview on Apple or Adobe Acrobat. Okay, the thing that I want to point out though is if you say file new file or markdown and you select PDF, notice here it says PDF output requires tech uh, on OS X and it requires MIC tech on Windows. Now I would like to say that this is easy. In general it is if you follow the instructions. Now this is free software. Tech doesn't cost any money. But when you download it, it may take a while to download it. And when you try to install it, you might run into some difficulties. So I've placed links in the notes sections, uh, in the notes section that you can follow and hopefully get some help. So yes, PDF is possible, but you have to download a pretty big package to get all of this to work.